back here. Right back here. This is where people concerned should be. The concern should not be LeBron James Sr. Okay? I don't know what's wrong with people's antennas. And this is what's crazy about it to me is that we got so many people claiming that they love LeBron James. If you love LeBron James, why do you keep doing this to him? Meaning you people who supposedly love him so much. These are the ones that's attacking him. Y'all mad at LeBron James. Y'all mad at him for going to play basketball and shooting a basketball to probably clear his head with everything that's been going on? Why is he shooting the basketball? His son, Bronny, just went through a horrific ordeal. He's back home. Now, he just, I think he was released today to where he could be at home and resting. They told people he was at home when he really wasn't because they were still running tests. They just didn't want all the media attention. They were trying to lessen it as much as possible, but LeBron was spotted going into the hospital back and forth. Thanks again to the medical staff that helped Bronny. My prayers go out to Bronny. So, and for him to have a full recovery. That's what my thoughts were. You were so mad at me for not praying for LeBron. Imagine that. I have to pray for LeBron over Bronny. You y'all fandom knows no bounds. Y'all care so much about LeBron, right? Supposedly. That the moment he go play basketball, y'all the main ones shooting him down for going to play basketball or shoot the basketball around. He probably needed the distraction. I've, have anybody ever been in a situation where someone, a loved one, was in an incident or whatever and they had a lot going on around them? And they went to do something to give them a distraction from everything that's happening? That's natural. So him trying to do something distracting to get his attention away from what's going on does not change the narrative. Doesn't mean he cares less or he's unconcerned about Bronny. That's just, that's dumb. But people are searching for headlines. That's their problem. They're searching for a reason to keep this going. Like, I didn't come up with this. Did I create this topic? No. This is a topic all these people are talking about. LeBron went to go play basketball. He ain't caring about Bronny. Why he ain't by Bronny's side? Bronny is okay. He told you that in his text. Bronny's like, all right, they're running these tests, but he's back to normal. He's an 18-year-old kid. You know, he went through that. He's going to need some rest and recuperation and getting himself back. They're going to put him through tests to make sure, you know, this is just a rare occasion. You know, most of this stuff happens is rare and you might never have, have it happen again, but still you wanna uh, make sure, you know, that's a very serious situation. You know, his heart stopped, that's serious. You know, so I don't understand why everyone is so freaked out about LeBron going to play basketball or shoot a basketball around. You know, 
These are the people that pretend they love LeBron so much, but they don't even care at all. They just they just there for the moment. They just here for the attention. I mean, I'm not a medical expert, so I can't say Ronnie should retire right now. I don't know. The other guy that this happened to a year ago, he actually came back and played for a little bit. You know, so I don't, I can't tell you, you know, is Bronny going to make it in the NBA? Is the NBA going to, I can't, I can't tell you anything of that nature right now. You know, that's for the doctors to do. You know, but if I'm a parent and this is my child, I'm not trying to shatter his dreams right now, telling him you're never playing again right now while he's trying to recuperate. I'm not trying to put that on his mind. I'm saying, hey, get better. We'll see what happens down the road. Just right now, that's not your concern. Getting better is your concern. You know, plus you got to understand, I've talked to someone that had cardiac arrest. And the biggest obstacle is the mental aspect. You're afraid to do a lot of things because you don't know if that's gonna happen again. Like I told you, the person that had the cardiac arrest was afraid to be alone because he didn't wanna have an incident happening and nobody else is there to help him. So. Yeah, so he want to be there and something happened to him and he ain't got nobody around him. So he became paranoid when he was in a situation where he was the only one there, you know. He always liked to be in groups now because, you know, he felt more safe. I know. Well, if you listen well, this to morning, we are hearing the desperate call for help. This is the 911 call for Bronny. And now we are hearing the 911 call from the day of his medical scare. So it sounded like mostly a kid was there more than anything. No, it's people hitting me up about the fight tomorrow. Um, no, that's just, everybody's talking about, oh, he's going to play basketball. So what? Let him, let that man grieve how he's going to grieve or be relieved you know Bronny's out of like out of trouble all the tests are coming up fine let him you know be who he's going to be you know let him go through recovering why is every day people who supposedly are LeBron James fans doing this to him Everybody should learn CPR. You never know when you might have to use it.
You never know when you're going to have to use it. Yeah, well, he's in stable condition. So what more do you want from anyone else? No, where exactly? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm out of my way for you. All right, sir. Uh, we're going to send help. Okay, your telephone is on. Don't hang up, sir. Don't hang up. Your telephone is Yeah. Okay, let's get next. Now, that was somebody calling from the medical staff. They were very nervous. Imagine being in a situation where you're on medical staff and someone's very famous son, you have to call 911 for. You know, that's a different conversation than calling 911 for anybody else. And the reason why that's a different conversation is because everything is elevated, is heightened. You're not going to get what you thought you were going to get out of the situation. They don't know anything about anything. No, why would they? Why would LeBron have to explain why he going to play basketball or shoot a basketball around? It's just, who says he's not concerned about Bronny? Just because he goes and shoot a basketball. So because he goes and shoots a basketball, that means he doesn't have any feelings or he don't care about what's going on with Bronny? No, it's just he, he's doing something to clear his mind, get himself... Oh, you know, out of the worrying mindset. Have you seen people when something happened to somebody else, other people fall out too? And they need a hospital and they got to go in? Mm-hmm.
most of these people think like that. They don't think, uh, no, no, they, they thinking like you, majority of the people think like you think. No. <laughs> exactly. No, no, no. Because the majority of you are not thinking about Bronny. Y'all focus is LeBron James. You see what I'm saying? Y'all focus is LeBron. Y'all are doing that. So what if LeBron go and shoot a basketball? Who cares? Uh -uh. <laughs> All right, it's a way to clear your mind. Exactly. It's common sense to anybody else who's not living through LeBron James. But see, the thing about it is this is supposed to be his fans. Did you think about Bryce? Did you think about Bronny? Did you think about his moms? Did you think about any of that? His sister, the little daughter who's probably confused and scared. His cousins, his nephews. You, you didn't think about any of that. Yeah, y'all don't care. Y'all just look for the news, the controversy. Oh, LeBron went to go shoot some basketball, so he don't care about Bronny. Where? You forget about his brother care about him, Bryce? You forget about his mother that care about him? When did I say LeBron don't care about Bronny? In any of my videos, where do you hear me say LeBron don't care about Bronny? That never happened because I never said that. Try again.
No, Sino didn't make this. So the update is Bronny is back home now. I think he came home this morning. He got his release. He was not at the hospital back when y'all thought he was. They were still running batteries of tests. And the reason they were running batteries of tests is because they were trying to figure out, you know, what caused this. I mean, it's, it's common sense for us. I don't think we need to have. Uh, I don't think we need to have some type of conversation and we got to huddle together to come up with something to say to defend LeBron. Why would I try to defend LeBron? I'm saying it because it doesn't make any sense. That's just a natural sense to see anybody who has been suffering from something using a distraction to try to get away from things or change the narrative. <sighs> That's just a natural response. Y'all make it out to be something criminal when it's clearly not the case. Water in the grass, man. Water in the grass. Well, it's like 100 degrees today, so I want to make sure the grass gets some water in it. Still a little damp from the rain, but still. A little extra water, a little extra drink ain't gonna hurt it. You think a PS5 deal is gonna matter over his son's health? Come on. Even if you don't like LeBron, that's a little more. Like I said, I'm a strong believer in that the stress was put on him by LeBron James. His excessive push, the pressures of being successful to go to the NBA and all this stuff. I think he had a lot of pressure put on him, and I do believe that was a factor. And I always believed LeBron was overbearing before this happened. I've actually stated it, you've seen it. So it's not something we're creating just because of Bronny's situation. So that's something I strongly believed. So why wouldn't I believe it right now today? That does not mean LeBron James doesn't care about Bronny. Bronny's is not his concern. First of all, Bronny's okay. All right. Right now, he's okay. He's just reco he recuperating right now. Younger athletes, sometimes, the majority of the times, the medical staff gets there early. Timing is of the essence. It's about getting your strength back and getting back healthy, not to play basketball, but to live a, a productive, normal life. 
that'll have anything to do with the stuff that y'all be thinking about. Sometimes y'all gotta get back to being realistic, getting the morals involved. Why would I wanna go on his show and debate him when I can do bigger numbers than him on my show? <laughs> Literally, I could do better numbers than him. So what would I need? What would I need Whitlock? I said everything about him I needed to say last night. When he got exposed for once again targeting people for everything. The national debt crisis. When we as black people gonna learn? Look at little Uzi Vert. He's just lowering the property value of the economy right now. If you had little Uzi Vert living in your neighborhood, your house and property is gonna drop. Now, why we as black people don't see this as an epidemic? <laughs> you see, stupidity. So I, well, what are we going to debate? Now, that's not me speaking to him verbatim, but you get what I'm talking about. Somebody speaking in horrific generalities like that. What's the point? Well, I'm gonna sit down with you for. You don't care about our people. You don't care about nothing anyway. So why I'm gonna count? Well, I'm gonna care about what you got to say, or even talking to you. All right. The majority, the minorities, are responsible <laughs> for the uncomfortableness of the majority. According to Whitlock, shoot, all blacks do crime. We all got guns, we all shooting up people, we all <laughs> twerking. <laughs> it's like, my goodness, how do we survive? So we showed his hypocrisy. He got a problem with black people twerking, but he ain't got no problem when when the Asian woman doing it in the oil, old, old Becky, he love them Beckys. But my thing is you ain't got to try to destroy black women and black people just cause you love white people. Go ahead, love who you want to love. Nobody stopping you. Nobody care either. Well, other parents are concerned whenever it's a high profile. Let me explain to you what the situation really is about right now. Uh, what Chell Sonning did is is horrible. Uh, when he's saying that that might be the case, but to assume LeBron James may be giving EPOs to his son at 18. Um, to me, that's what there's no evidence of. It.
I mean, no. See, this is what I'm talking about, right here. And I want the whole world to understand it. When you mess with When you mess with things you don't understand, um, these situations happen. You know, we're all looking at situations that don't make a lot of sense. When Kale Sonny said what he said uh, about LeBron, and I keep trying to tell y'all this is a, a bigger thing going on as the right wing people are trying to find ways to pick at LeBron James because he feels he's so on the left. That's why you see people from the right, they show no compassion for a man whose son just had a cardiac arrest at 18. They use this as an opportunity to attack the jab. It's the jab. It's the jab. The jab did it. This is the jab. And we got to know LeBron said his whole family took the jab just years ago. I don't think he took it. I really don't. I can't trust anything LeBron James says out of his mouth. You can't take that as factual information. Now, will he be pushing the agenda for everybody to do it? Yeah. But would, is he the type of person that would go along and do it himself? Hell no. So I don't trust LeBron James in that, that regard. But to go out, there's no evidence of it. There's no evidence proving this is what happened to Bronny. So why would you even bring that to the table? But I know why they do it, because they are having a, their own personal agenda against it. So that's why you hear mostly people from that side of the party on the right side making these statements boldly. Then they're going to get to the conspiracy theories. Then it's going to move from there. Then you have Chael Sonnen, who spoke out against LeBron and said, me and LeBron have the same guy. And LeBron never sued him. LeBron never said anything to him. So once that happened, you saw what? Things changed, right? <clears throat> None of these people think the same anymore. Uh, LeBron should retire. I think he should retire because there's nothing else for him to do. He's just milking it. But
I never had anybody feel that way, you know, the way everybody else is trying to make it out to be. Well, it's, you can't really blame that on LeBron. Um, how many, most people do what they see their father do. Like, it's a lot of people that follow their father's footsteps and in life. You know, you, they don't say nothing about when the son go and works for the company that his dad worked for. And end up doing the same thing his father does. His father drove trucks. Now the son drives trucks too. Uh, the son, the dad was a construction guy. The son's the construction guy. You know, they, they don't say anything about that. But when a professional athlete do it, you know, all oh, the son trying to be like his daddy. You can't blame him just for him doing that. They probably wanted to play basketball too. That's natural. You know, you've been bending all the games and everything else. Floyd Mayweather Jr., you know, he was taken to the gym all the time with his dad. Boxing is around him. All his uncles boxed. So it was quite natural for him from a baby to be putting on boxing gloves, hitting a bag. So look where, you know, it's like, look where they at today. You know, so it's, it's just a whole thing where he took it further than his parents ever did. Um, the sport, the sport is in him. And, but it's not just related to sports, you know, You've seen dad, father, and son businesses, body shops. He fixed cars, his son fixed on cars. So it's it's almost like your first heroes are normally your fathers. And some people grow up to do what their father does because that's normally, he probably taught his son. Taught him everything you need to know about an automobile, about anything that you do. That's what fathers normally do. They spend time with their sons. That's a, this is normally what they want to do. Sometimes they're not even around their fathers, and they ended up doing the same things that um, Well, that Carly girl need to be arrested and drug out and taken to jail like anybody else. She can turn yourself in. Ain't no, what's this turn yourself in? She ain't no celebrity. You go in there with the battering ram if you got to <laughs> with the cops and you drag her out of that house on cuffs and cuffs and she go and get processed. She resisting arrest. <laughs> That's <laughs> you go get her. What in the world are you talking about? You think I'm going to tell the cops I'm going to have the option to turn myself in at 5? Like, you know, you got to turn yourself in at 5 o'clock.
No, I just think that's low down, man. They they using their own personal agenda to try to come after somebody who's in pain, which just reflects more on them. Um, nobody really watches, um, nobody really watch, um, what you would call first take and all that crap. Nobody really watched that anymore. Is that's, that's a, that's a no, no fact right there. No one seems to, um, focus on that too much. That's pretty much a done deal. No, no, no. They were, um, there are different people that's trying to make a, these, uh, what you would call assumptions about what LeBron's moves are going to be towards retirement. Uh, since if Bronny can't play, should LeBron go ahead and retire? LeBron is playing not because of any Bronny. He's using that as an excuse. He doesn't want to leave the spotlight. I told y'all that. That's just his excuse. I want to play with my son. He's just saying that so that people won't be questioning, like, why is he still here? You're not winning championships. Go on and have a seat. But he, uh, I'm better than I've ever been. And by the league, keep helping him. You're not going to be able to grow your sport if you keep attaching your wagon to a 39-year-old basketball player who's past his prime. He can't keep up with these 19, 20-year-olds, but because of his fame, you're keeping him around in the game. So personally, I think he should have retired three, four years ago. But now he wanted to get all these records and hang around and milk it. Fine, okay, you milked it. All right, now what's your next step? <clears throat> Um, when Kobe Bryant hurt himself the second time after he came back from that injury, I would say Kobe should probably hang it up. It's, it's over. When he came back too soon and they put out, the Lakers shamelessly put out this montage of Kobe's jersey being out in the rain. It got torn. They had the cartoon thing of Kobe's jersey going through everything and then He's coming back and made such a big announcement about Kobe coming back with a video montage just to try to sell tickets. And All right, it's just to sell tickets. And then Kobe comes back and about two weeks later, he has another injury, um, you know, to his other knee. And that's when I knew I said, yeah, he's. He should just go ahead and retire. 
It's not going to happen. So Kobe would have broken the score, all-time scoring record had he not gotten hurt and missed two, three seasons. He missed like two, three years of basketball within his 20 years. Then you got to remember his first three years, he barely played. The coach didn't want to really play him. So he really, his first three years in the season and in the NBA, he really was in limited roles coming off the bench to a team that's predominantly, you know, a playoff team. And they're thinking, let's go win a championship which Kobe can be in our future in his 20s. But Kobe's like, I'm ready to play and win now. I can go out and do these things that these other guys are doing. You know, so he just, unfortunately, and he was thinking like, man, maybe I should have played at Charlotte. <laughs> You know, maybe I should have went over there. Why am I, you know, I'm in L.A. where I wanted to be. I'm a Laker, what I wanted to be, but I can't really get on the court. Well, Eddie Jones was there, and Eddie Jones from Temple was um, one of the prime aspects of Temple and uh, and Chaney, Coach Chaney's uh, system of defense to offense, all-around basketball player. Um, Eddie Jones was it, you know, mid-range. He was that guy, you know. um, I felt bad that, you know, the trade happened and he had to go. And that really, he went to the Miami Heat. And it's like everywhere they went, you know, he never really got his opportunity to get the championship. It's like as soon as the Lakers got rid of him, they ended up winning a championship. You know, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. And then he goes and plays with Shaq. And they lose to the Pistons. And then then he's gone. Then the next year, the Heat win the championship. So it's it was bad for Eddie in that aspect, you know. But I remember those times. No, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, they they tampering with the uh, live stream. They're doing a whole lot of stuff right now. No, I don't. You see, when you have people that supposedly is your brother and supposedly have your back, you got to understand Some people have your back, others will not. That's just the way it is. Some people gonna look at you and 
want to ride with you or doesn't want. Mm -hmm. You got to be ready for all of it, B. I just try not to. I try not to really focus on the nonsense. Just focus on the positives, man. That's all you can do. Brian's going to be all right. He's going to be all right. He got the best medical attention he going to get. coming from no not at all sir not at all here's the main factor uh, I just saw it up there. Kwame got a video talking about it, too. Somebody hit me up talking about it. That's how I end up speaking on it. I'm like, what? <laughs> I wake up to this? No, oh, that seems to be everybody's concern now. Everyone's main concern is what's going on over there. People don't care about that stuff, B. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you something, man. People really don't care about that stuff. You know what they care about? Controversy. They ain't caring about, man, this is a father looking out for his kid, blah, blah, blah. They don't care about that. They want controversy. Da -da 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 -da. Please. Was anybody thinking about what USC is going to do this year? Who's sitting around thinking about, man, I wonder what USC is going to do this year? I don't know of a one. Man, I wonder what USC gonna do. If USC do this, uh, who the hell is worried about USC? <laughs> what the hell they're doing? Not me, Jack. Not me. So Bronny is bringing the attention to the university. 
I just told you, he was a McDonald's All-American. He averaged about three assists a game, 14 points, and maybe five rebounds, like maybe four tops. And that was enough to be a high McDonald's high school All-American. Which shows you what? Good people. It don't take much. It don't take much. Right? So this was never about that. Popularity will take you a long way. But at some point, you're going to run into that wall where you got to prove it. When Jordan's sons was playing, ESPN rolled out the red carpet, start promoting the Jordan sons, start showing Jeffrey's games because Jordan is his father. They wanted to see was there any magic there. And they ran into a consistent consistent number one basketball player in the world, and Air Gordon, who we know now in the league as veteran Eric Gordon. No, you got to understand something, people. When you are when you are in the when you are in a um, when you're in a process of making decisions and doing what you need to do in life to move forward. You look at what's happening to Bamani Jones, right? See, Bamani Jones had a show on HBO and he was very adamantly taking shots and pointing out factors and going after the NFL. Uh, he exposed the NFL, he exposed some of the BS that's going on in politics some of the BS that's going on in basketball, and you think ESPN wasn't going to renew your contract? <laughs> they are not bringing you back, sir. They didn't want to let you go either. HBO got rid of them, said we're not bringing your show Game Theory back, even though I'm here to tell you that was a good show.
Mm-mm-mm. No, I'm sitting here looking at all the stuff that didn't transpire since I was asleep. You know, when you sleep and you wake up and you start seeing all the stuff that didn't went on, you're like, what? Well, they had the San Diego Comic Con. You know, that's like the biggest comic book event that they have is in San Diego. I don't need to go when it's that big. I go to stuff like that when it's like that opportunity to, like mostly here. The karma of LeBron came for his son and messed up the one thing LeBron wanted to do. I mean, it still could happen. You don't, you know, the NBA, they put people on the team that don't even, that's not even NBA ready. Like, so, Bronny could still make the NBA. It's, they could always just pick him up. He could be on a 10 day contract. You don't even, look, they put Scottie Pippen's son and Shaq's son in the NBA. Okay? Even Shaq said, my son ain't ready. You know, for the NBA. He, he knew that. But the parents wanted to make money off of him. The mama. She was ready to get that money off Shaq. And push him, you know, off Shaq's son. And get him making some money. So, right away, they, they pushing him. Most people who got personalities, they can build themselves up through social media. Oh damn, my battery dying, y'all. So I gotta, yeah, I gotta go ahead and shut it down. Well, all right, let me go ahead and shut this down, bro. I'm out, let you.